Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns in their upcoming uh, September of 2016 premiere auction. And this totally awesome one was sitting in the rifle racks, looking lonely and begging for a video. This is a second model Smith Jennings rifle. What makes that interesting, you ask? Well, this is one of the direct predecessors of every lever action ever made. And it's really cool to get to take a look at one. So the story of this rifle starts with a guy named Walter Hunt. He was a prolific inventor. He invented such cool things as the safety pin, and the fountain pen, and the rocket ball. I think we all know which of those three is the coolest. Uh, his idea was to take a, a standard bullet, hollow out the base, and fill it with gunpowder, and then put a, uh, a cork seal on the back of it. Little hole in the middle of the cork. The idea was this thing was its own self-contained cartridge. You wouldn't have to load a bullet and powder. Now you could load one item and get both of them at the same time. Now when Hunt invented this, and in fact even through this rifle, this didn't contain any sort of primer. You would still have to prime this firearm separately. However, you had your powder and your cartridge, powder and your projectile as a single unit. Now Hunt invented this and set about finding someone to manufacture them and this proved to be problematic. There were a lot of problems with the design. It was fragile. It didn't work well. Uh, I think only one was ever actually made. So a guy by the name of Aerosmith was hired by Hunt to do the production of this gun and he realized that there were some issues here and he set one of his employees, a guy named Lewis Jennings, to work improving it. Um, Jennings made some changes not really enough changes. Jennings added like a rack and pinion lever system to it, and but it wasn't really enough to make this gun viable. And Aerosmith recognized this and um, figured the best way out of this was to sell this problem to somebody else. So he found a New York financier by the name of Palmer who was all he was able to convince that this would be a, fan, a fantastic investment. Palmer bought the, the patents and the whole project and immediately sent it to a company by the name of Robbins and Lawrence and said he wanted 5,000 of them made. And this turned out to be a problem because this gun still really wasn't ready for production. Uh, most of the guns that were actually made by Robbins and Lawrence, they actually converted to single shot guns. They got rid of the magazine tube entirely and uh, you'd, you'd hand load a cartridge and then hand prime it and then fire. And it was an underpowered cartridge because all of its powder had to be contained inside the bullet. So this thing, not very successful. However, this, this gun would continue to evolve. And what's really interesting is that the shop foreman of Robbins and Lawrence was a guy by the name of Benjamin Taylor Henry. Henry, you might recognize from the name of the first really successful version of the lever action rifle. Well, that's no coincidence. Henry got involved with this rifle because he was working at Robbins and Lawrence. Another interesting name, a guy by the name of Daniel Wesson was a gunsmith. He was working for a totally different company at the time, but Robbins and Lawrence was making parts for Daniel Wesson's employer. Daniel Wesson was at the Robbins and Lawrence factory acting as an inspector for these parts that were being manufactured. So Daniel Wesson's also sitting in this factory seeing what's going on with this kind of rifle. Now uh, Palmer realized that this project was kind of turning into a problem. And so he brought on another guy to try and improve it and fix some of the problems. That guy's name was Horace Smith. Horace Smith did finally make improvements that led to this specific gun being made. And this specific gun is a second model Smith Jennings rifle. Basically the lineage here is that Hunt is responsible for the tube magazine. Jennings is responsible for the percussion ignition system, which we'll get to in a moment. And Smith is responsible for the lever and uh, loading mechanism. You put all of these together, we finally get to this gun. They made just about 400 of these. And, and then by 1852, this company went under. It, went, it was done. Uh, they gave up. This thing was losing money left and right because who would want to buy this gun that was underpowered and super expensive and pretty finicky to run? So this wouldn't continue any farther until 1854 when two of the guys who'd been involved, Horace Smith and Daniel Wesson, got together and realized, you know, they thought they could make some improvements and, and get it to the next step. And they turned it into what would be known as the Volcanic Rifle and Pistol. And from there it became the Henry, and from the Henry it became the Winchester, and the story goes on. 
However, we're going to stop at the point of this rifle and take a closer look at this one so you can see this step in the evolutionary process. So here's the action. And we've really got two things going on. Well, we've got several things going on. There's a tube magazine of Hunt-style rocket ball ammunition. This tube would hold 24 rounds, which is pretty cool. However, this had not gotten to the point yet of someone deciding that it ought to have a spring in it. So the end of the magazine tube simply has a plug, which I can take out here. Just plug like that. And you would tip it up and load 24 uh, rocket ball cartridges in, uh, tail back, nose to the front and then replace the plug. And then when you were loading this, you would make a point to hold it muzzle up so that gravity would run the cartridges in the tube down into the action. So that's part one. We've got the rocket balls here in the magazine tube. Part two is we need an ignition system. And so we actually have a magazine up on top, which I can open here. This contained what are called pellet primers. Now the idea was you'd have this, this little pellet of mercury fulminate that would explode when it was vigorously hit, and you have a hammer, let's cock the hammer open. We have this hammer, very long firing pin here, that reaches down into, through this hole in the receiver, into a little compartment in the breech face that holds a pellet primer. So we've got our lever here, and when we cycle this, you can see that we've got this thing moving in a circle. That little hole contains one of our, our primer pellets. One falls into that, and when the bolt is fully forward, that pellet is forced down into the, fa into the bolt itself. Then when I pull the lever forward, you can see the bolt coming through that hole right there to lock up, and now this that little hole in our uh, pellet magazine is moved to the back. So this is kind of like a primer feeder in a reloading press. You've got a pile of pellets in here covered by this plate, which would be closed whenever you're shooting, and it's going to feed them one by one uh, down the tube into the bolt to use. Now, when the bolt is fully in battery, then when I pull the ring trigger all the rest of the way back, it drops the hammer. The hammer is going to drop down into the bolt crush that pellet, which is going to explode. Fire from that is going to go into the chamber. It's going to go through the little hole in the cork back plate of the rocket ball, set off the, the gunpowder in there, launch the bullet out the barrel. Now the original theory was that that cork uh, backing board would be left in the barrel. It would kind of be shoved to the back of the chamber and stay in there, and that then your next cartridge would push in behind it and that cork would be used to wipe all of the fouling out of the barrel. Uh, that didn't actually work that way. The, the cork kind of got blown into pieces and, and thrown out the barrel each time you fired, but an interesting idea. Now, we also have a, uh, a little cover plate here. Remember, there's no ejection port on this rifle because the rocket ball didn't leave a case behind to eject. Now, if I lift up this, there we go. I can open up this port, and now we can look at the bolt mechanism. I'm going to put the hammer at half cock so it doesn't interfere. What we have right here is our bolt, our breech face. There's no firing pin hole in it, or there's no firing pin in it, but right down in there is where we would hold a pellet primer. So when the, the gun is fully locked like this, we then pull the trigger, drop the hammer down into the bolt, and the fire there is going to go out through the front hole into the cartridge. Then we're going to cycle the ring trigger backwards. It's going to pull the bolt open, and then it's got an elevator in here. When I pull it all the way back, now our elevator lifts up. The next rocket ball is going to be sitting in that elevator, so it's now in line with the barrel. When I pull the trigger back, now the bolt comes forward, pushes that rocket ball into the chamber, and the elevator drops down ready to accept the next cartridge from the tube magazine. This is the exact mechanical system that pretty much all future lever action rifles are going to use, or at least all the Winchester ones in the, the near future. What this rifle still needs to have done to it to become those guns is to use a fully self-contained cartridge so that 
we can get rid of the need to have this separate priming magazine and this different type of firing mechanism. Thank you for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you uh, learned something, got a chance to look at a cool step in the very early history of the lever action rifle here. Now, not many people have ever handled one of these, much less owned one. If you would like to join that cool and exclusive club, take a look at the description text below. You will find there a link to Rock Island's catalog page on this rifle. You can take a look at their pictures and their description. And if you would really like to add this to your own personal gun collection, you can do so. It's coming up for sale in the September 2016 auction. And uh, you can place a bid online for it, or you can come up here to the auction house to bid in person. Thanks for watching.